Well, hello there, football friends. So tonight we're joined by the dynamic and determined Cliftonville ladies and Northern Ireland international, Vicky Carlton. Vicky talks us through the ups and downs of 2022, uh, the drive and determination that has put her back on track and Cliftonville ladies on track for uh, a league title, but throws us back to our football journey. A real good insight. Uh, we chat about the the daily the daily routine and what it takes to play at the top level of football in this in this country. So a lot to draw a lot of inspiration to draw from for any budding lady footballers out there. And again we can all learn a thing or two listening to the professionalism, drive and determination of this young lady. So I hope you enjoy the listen. A great chat all in all and again a new football friend. Keep your uppies with Richie and Tots. <laughs> And that's us live. So, Vicky, thanks for joining us. Uh, Cliftonville and Northern Ireland International. Me and Tats are looking forward to catching up with you, playing keep you up with you. Uh, so, we're going to run through your beginning. So, the first question off the bat is, uh, who do you support? Who was your uh, draw to football and your inspiration to date? Um, I half say I'm a lead supporter, but to be honest... I I'll I'll watch anybody. Like I I love watching Man City. I love watching Arsenal when when they're playing good. Um, but my granddad was a Leeds supporter, so I, I have a soft spot for Leeds too. Um, but my inspiration growing up um was actually Steph Houghton. Um, I used to copy her football bits and everything. Um, but yeah, when she was playing for Arsenal, I would say she was probably my my biggest inspiration. I wouldn't even have said a male footballer, which is which is probably a strange thing because most people my age would say a male footballer, but if you ask the younger ones now, they would probably mention a female footballer. I think that's fantastic. That's a sign of just where the female game has went, you know, where there is massive idols out there now. You know, it is the game's forever improving and the numbers are, are growing. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a whole different ball game now. Um, for the younger ones coming up than what it was when maybe I was younger or people a few years older than me were a little bit younger. Brilliant. And what about then your your playing career? Where did it all start for you? Um, I started in my at my hometown team, um, Balamina. Well, Balamina All Stars. Um, but yeah, I started there when I was uh seven years old, six years old, seven years old. Um, and I played for them for. 10 years um we actually could play senior football when we turned 14 so i was playing senior football from 14 with balamina um until i moved to glens when i was 17 18. Well, this went from strength to strength then well yeah i mean um balamina is a lot like yes. Yes. what did you say sorry no one ahead oh no yeah well balamina would be a smaller team we were well they were in the premiership then they've just come up, got promoted again this year um but they were in the premiership so we we're we were battling with the likes of glens and um cliftonville and linfield and everybody um but yeah signing for glens was probably a big move at the time for me because i was still quite young brilliant so at 17 you were at, you were at the glens and then you traveled you spent some time in england was that by university direction or what was uh, yeah, so I went over for uni um, in Southampton. Um, for my first year, I just played for uni because I was just coming back from tearing my hamstring. <clears throat> and then I went and I trialed for Portsmouth. Um, and then from Portsmouth, I played against Lewis and the manager obviously liked me. And when I had left Portsmouth, he signed me for Lewis. And then my second year at Lewis, we were championship. Fantastic. And how did you find the standard then in, in England compared to coming home again? Um, when I was playing in tier three for like Portsmouth, um, it, the, the standard is pretty similar to what the, maybe the top four teams would be over here. 
um, and then signing for Lewis and playing championship, that's there's quite a big jump, um, just in terms of like speed of the game and everything, um, and the players you're playing against, uh, the quality of them is just unbelievable. And then obviously when you're playing championship, you get drawn against WSL teams and like the FA Cup and everything. So I played against Arsenal and you couldn't even get any of them, honestly. It's a, a different class. So just in your younger years, uh, between uh, junior football at Glens and then university, is there any standout moments that you want to reflect on or throw back to us? Um, Arsenal aside? <laughs> probably, probably just making my um, senior debut for Northern Ireland. Um, it was in the Australia Cup against um, Croatia. Um, we beat them 1-0. Chris McGuinness scored. Um, and yeah, probably signing... Signing for Lewis was, was probably, I would say, where everything probably changed for me, like in terms of like me actually wanting to be professional. That was a that was a big move. And then obviously I was getting paid to play. And that's all, obviously just what I wanted. So those two moments were were pretty big. Fantastic. And I was reading up about Lewis. Uh, I see they're uh, a club that plays the equal, equal pay across the, the senior teams. Yeah, so they have the the same but the same budget for men and women. Um, same facilities, same kit, same everything. Like you, you name it, and everything is equal across everything. Um, which was like you know, we were always doing like promotional things and everything. Um, to do with it because they had obviously just brought it in the year before that I signed. Um, so there was a lot of publicity and everything. So they're they're a very good club, very good. Awesome. I'll hand over to Nell here. He's been very quiet in the background. <laughs> no, just, just listen uh, to, to Vicky. It's just fascinating. I'm, I'm going to take you kind of back to the very start. When you were growing up, did you, like, what was, I suppose, what gave you your passion about football? And uh, did you always have that ambition, even when you were a young girl, that you wanted to be a footballer? Like I, I think I did. Like I remember, like I, everything was just football. Like I, every single day I was playing. Um, and then obviously when I got selected for the Northern Ireland Fifteens, um, it was even more training on top of what I was already doing. I think, I, I probably did want to be a professional footballer, but I mean, the likelihood of it, like back then, like it, it wasn't really known. Obviously, I mean. Like in England or whatever, but then I never thought like, oh, I'll go to England and I'll be professional. Um, but I think that thought probably came about when I was like maybe like 16, 17. I was like, okay, maybe I do want to be a professional footballer. Like it's actually possible. And when you were growing up, did you always grow up with, uh, when you were playing the underage um, groups here in Northern Ireland, were you always playing with a girls team or at the very start did you have to play with a boys team? Because we were... We had a chat with um, a friend of, of Richie's um, in a previous podcast. Um, he plays for Lisbon. You probably came up against her, uh, Julie Henderson. And uh, she was saying how she was having to play with the boys. Richie actually managed her. Um, and then, obviously, there weren't really those opportunities, I suppose, back then when she started to get to, to I suppose, under 13, under 14. Was it similar for you? Um, or did you always were you always playing with with girls? Did you always have those opportunities? Um, I think I was actually quite lucky because obviously my hometown Balmina had um a girls team like like throughout the age group. So I oh, actually great. started playing for Balmina All Stars, and that was that was an all girls club. And then the manager that was there actually managed the wee boys team as well. So I played boys football after playing girls football. Because he wanted me to play for his his boys side as well, so mine mine was like a little bit opposite. But I think it depends where where you grew up, depending if they had a girls team or not. And if they didn't, then you would play boys football. But I was I was quite lucky. Although some people would probably think opposite and say that you can tell when a little girl has played with boys because they're more physical than what they would do if they had just played girls football growing up. But I played both. But girls football came first. 
And did you enjoy playing the boys' football as well? I suppose did did you find that maybe you, you could be a bit more physical? And did you find it maybe helped your game a wee bit, or did you enjoy kind of playing both? No, I enjoy playing both. Um, I remember going to the boys' training and. Like, none of them would tackle me for a little bit because I was a girl. And then the manager, um, Chrissy, was like, boys, you need to get stuck in. Like, she's taking the mick out of you and everything. So then from then on, they would just tackle me like I was a boy, and which probably helped because they were probably a little bit rougher. But I, enjoy- I enjoyed it. It was good. No, good stuff. And uh, so tell us about sort of, I suppose, this uh, eventually, obviously, then you, you came came back home then to, uh, and you joined Linfield. Um, no, no did you Clint first. Clintorn first? Yeah, for a year, yeah. Okay, and then on to, where, where did you go then after that? Was that then on to, on to Linfield? Yeah, and then, and then that was Linfield, yeah. And and how were those kind of spells? Obviously, you had a season or two at, at both. You know, what, what what's your kind of, I suppose, standout memories there with those two clubs? Um, well, the year that I came back and signed for Glentor, and we won, we won the Irish Cup, we won the County Antrim Cup, and we won all three. Goodness, I can't remember the name of the other one, but we won the the three cups that year. We just missed out on the league, um, and then yeah, Linfield, um Obviously, I went and played Champions League with them. Um, I think that's why probably Phil brought me in because he had lost a couple of players, and he knew we had to go and um, play Champions League, but. Obviously, with everything, COVID hit and we played a short season. And that year we had Champions League, but we played Anderlecht and they're, they're a very good team too. Um, but yeah, that's probably the, the standouts, winning the Cups. And then with Linfield, we went and played Champions League, which was obviously a good experience. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty good standout moments, aren't they, Richie? Winning, winning the travel and playing in the, in the Champions League. And playing Champions League, yeah, <laughs> it's supposed to be unbeatable game. Yeah. Vicky, tell me this. Have you always been a, a midfielder? Um, Start your career as a midfielder? Um, no, honestly, I I played a little bit of everywhere. Um, I wasn't a midfielder at all, apart from when I played like uni football. You know, just like your um your Wednesday matches when you're at uni, you just play like different universities. I played midfield there. Um, but then when I was at Portsmouth, I was a winger, and at Lewis, I was a wing back and a winger and sometimes depending on formation I play right back and then last season for Linfield I ended up playing centre back most of the time because our centre backs were injured and one left to go to Cliftonville so I, I can play a little bit of anywhere just don't put me in nets <laughs> I was just going to ask could you do nets because we're stuck for a keeper for Sunday if, if you fancy it although you have to be over 35 so you're kind of what 10 years away from that 11 yeah. years so of course <laughs> oh, very good. So you 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 play in every position. So you're you're a student of the game, to say the least. You you have to learn how to play in every di- different position. Come different uh, traits come with different positions. So oh, you've learned a lot on your travels. What did you say? Sorry. You've learned a lot on your travels. Oh, I have. All these various different positions. Oh, I definitely have big time. Centre mid is definitely the hardest position to play. Well, tops would agree with you, I think. Uh, something like that. Uh, Richie, unfortunately, kind of sticks me there for the over 35s. And yeah, I think with the over 35s, like there's, there's, there's very little running. There's lots of gaps in, in, uh, all over the pitch. Uh, fellas just running up the field thinking they're still in their 20s when they're clearly not. But, uh, it's, it's good crack. But here, what's, what's the Champions League like? And um, the Champions League games. And what difference do you notice, I suppose, with the, uh, Playing teams like Anderlecht, what, what, what do you feel is, is, I suppose, the gap there? Is it, is it fitness? Is it skill? Is it movement or, or what? Or tell us a wee bit about that, your experience with Champions League. Do they play the Champions League music as well? And also, yeah. what, what's the teams like? Um, so I actually played Champions League with Glen Torren the year that, um, well, no, when I was 18 and playing for them. Um, and we did pretty good. Um, so that time when we played, we played three games and we hosted it. So it was over here. Um, um, we did pretty good. I think we lost one, drew one and won one. I think that was the result. So that, that was pretty good. Um, I can't remember off my head who we played, but I remember that we were, we were like on par with 
probably all three teams. Um, but obviously the results probably didn't really show that apart from the one we won. Um, but we had we had a pretty solid team when we when we played. Um, if you look back and see our team that we that I played for Glens with, it was it was pretty solid. Um, but the year that we went with Limfield, it was a it was a very young team. Um, and Anderlecht are like even in their league they smash teams like week in week out like seven nil six nil. So I, I would assume that they're they're pretty good. I think they went on. I think they went on to the quarter final that year. Actually, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they did. But um, it's it was a total totally different. Um, I think that we just got played off the park. I I just remember running so much and playing centre mid and getting nowhere near anybody because they just moved the ball so fast. And it it was it reminded me against playing against Arsenal, and I was just I was blown by half time because we were running so much. Um, but it was just obviously experience because our team was so young um, and then they're, they're full-time. They're full-time footballers as well. So Linfield at the time, we were training two days a week. Yeah, so you, I suppose there's, a, there's always going to be that, that gap. But I suppose, as you said, it's the experience and it kind of gave you the, the taster of Champions League football. And I suppose it, it gave you kind of, I'm sure, the desire that I, I want to make sure I'm back here next season. Oh, of course. I think if, fingers crossed, if Cliff, Cliftonville win the league this year and go to Champions League, I think we'll compete with probably anybody that we're put up against. Um, but obviously we've got a more experienced team than what Linfield do because they were like all young ones because so many players players are left. But I think obviously if Cliftonville go and play, we've got a good bunch who can definitely perform in the Champions League. Chris, so then of course you made your move, your your recent move to to uh, to Cliftonville. Uh, was that was that a tough decision? You know, leaving Linfield, joining joining the rivals, or in a way, was it kind of a fairly easy decision because you're going to a side that's I suppose on the up top of the table, competing for trophies? Um, no, it definitely wasn't easy. <laughs> um, like at the start of the season. Um, Cliff and Will came in for me and I was I was like 50-50 I was like oh do I like Olympia have a really bad season like I didn't enjoy it or whatever um, but I decided then like to give them a chance um, and see if we could like turn things around because like I love the club and I love like um, I love the manager and everything like we get on really well um, but then I knew just from watching the games obviously because I was injured for the first part of the season like I knew that if I went into the team that I just wouldn't enjoy it again just from watching because the same mistakes were happening and happening and I would just get frustrated. So um, when it, like obviously when the transfer window, like it was an easier decision than what it was at the start of the season. But uh, it was, it was tough to tell, to tell the manager that I was going to leave. And obviously they were trying to convince me or to stay, whatever, but I had my mind made up before I had spoke to him. So I couldn't really turn back. Yeah, and and I suppose it, it it was this year's been a how would you sum up this this year for you between sort of uh, injuries and you know obviously you're you were in the Northern Ireland camp at, at the beginning of the year would there c- could you describe this this year in, in one word and I suppose that move to Cliftonville was um I suppose more of a I suppose the positive signs um of your year, um, but it, it must have been a bit of a, a whirlwind for you this this 2022. Yeah, big time. I don't, I don't even have one specific word for it. <laughs> like, it's just been, it's just been crazy. Um, just full of, like, highs and lows um, to go from being called into the, the full-time setup of Northern Ireland from January to July, and I only got six weeks out of it, basically. Um, before I got injured, so well, obviously I was still in with them and doing my rehab when I got my surgery and everything. So, um, I was still in with them, but it was it was tough, you know, because I knew that I wasn't going to the arrows, and that was the the whole point of the training camp. But it's over now, and I'm playing, and I played, I played two ninety minutes now, so that's recovery complete, and I can hopefully end twenty two on a massive high. 
Absolutely. Ten points clear at the top of the league. Let's hope you see that see it through and have a few trophies to you see it end on a high. I hope so. I, I definitely hope so. That would that would top it off. <laughs> so the football gods owe you wanna think after your, your injury and your Oh big time. Big time. They they owe me a lot more than a league win, I think. <laughs> well Champions League's not good enough. Three in a row with Glen <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose what what it's showing though, Vicky, is just how resilient you are. That you know, because it, it it must have been really tough for you when beginning of the year you're thinking, yes, everything's kind of falling into place, and then you have your injury, but you've come through it. You've went through the rehab because there must have been so many low moments during that period, and now you've come out of it. You're playing for arguably the top side in in the women's Premier League. Um, you should go on and win the league. Hopefully play a Champions League football. So you must be pretty proud of yourself, yes. You must have to reflect on, on some of the disappointing moments, but you must also be proud of how you've kind of come through it and probably come through it a, a stronger a stronger person. And what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean I had never really had like a bad injury before, like in however many years I've been playing like um but I think probably nearly every player will go through some sort of injury that keeps them out for a good few months um and everyone will tell you that it makes them a different player like you like I'll never take stepping on a football pitch for granted ever again because when I when I wanted to the most like I couldn't like I didn't get to go to the Euros or like my dream of going to the Euros got cut pretty short so um I will definitely just never take it for granted again and I mean, my ankle will probably never move the same as what it did before, but I mean, I can still play and I can still play at a good level. So it's like it's a it's a win lose kind kind of thing because I got the surgery and yes, it's not going to be the same, but I mean, I'm still playing and I can still play at a good level. So it has changed me in some ways, but mainly for the positive. My outlook on football is totally different now to what it was before I got injured. No, that's great. As you say, it was a, it was a physical element. Your, your body physically has been fixed, and now you've your two ninety minutes under your belt psychologically. Then, you know, mentally, you're you're back on track. Oh, definitely, yeah. Any advice, Vicky, for any young girl? Or boy, or whoever is going through like a like an injury that because as you said, especially if you haven't had one before, what 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 advice would you give them? Just do your rehab, <laughs> do it religiously, um, because if you don't, it'll, like it will just it will just mess everything up in the process, um, and just stay calm. I remember sometimes I would just get so annoyed at myself because I couldn't do something. Or like for me, like it took me ages to get any movement back in my ankle at all. And you just you just need to stay calm, and because everything will come if you do your rehab and you do what the physios tell you, then you'll be back. You'll be back before you know it. Like I look back now, and it's just like I can't even like believe that it happened because it feels like I was out for no time at all when realistically I was out for half a year. Oh, great. Fair play to you. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to, I'm sure, be an exciting end of the season. And as I said, as you, you've got a couple of 90 minutes under your belt. So I kind of always have a wee click into uh, Cliff and Bulls starting 11. And just noticed, obviously, you've, you've you've been involved and you've been starting the last couple of games, which is which is great. And I suppose it, you know, you just needed to get that, maybe that first game out of the road, first couple of tackles, first couple of passes. And I'm sure you were you were flying after that. Yeah, um, against Derry, that was my that was my first game back, and I got twenty minutes. Um, but it, like, obviously, it was the most nerve wracking thing ever stepping back on a football pitch again, and someone going to tackle me. Like, it was a massive fear. But as soon as I got a couple of passes in, a couple of like, a couple of shots or whatever, like I was a hundred percent like I forgot that I had even been injured. So, um, after that game, and then Linfield was the next game, and I got sixty minutes, and I started it. Um, and I just, I've just been building from then. I think obviously last night was probably my best performance yet. 
Um, come obviously 90 minutes, but even fitness wise, like the other games, I felt like 60 minutes and I was done. But even last night, fitness wise, I felt 100%, which was good. Great job, great job. And I suppose what, what do you have kind of personal targets then for the rest of the season in terms of do you set yourself targets with you want to get, I suppose your, your main target was just getting back on the pitch, but now you're back on the pitch, you've got two ninety minutes. Do you set yourself usually targets? I want to hit, get a couple of goals, a couple of assists, win a couple of trophies, or I suppose is it just for you just getting back on the field and, and staying fit? Um, normally I would, like normally like at the start of the season I would be like, oh, I want to score however many goals or like I want to keep my past succession rate above whatever because we do get stats, but um, I hadn't set any targets as of yet just because I wanted to see how, how I was playing or like even like fitting into the Cliftonville team, like I just needed to settle, I just needed to play, um, but I definitely want to score before the end of the season, that's a minimum, but other than that, it's just, I just wanna just wanna win the league and hopefully score even just one goal. That would be that would be nice. No, I'm I'm pretty confident. So tell us, do you get you get much uh stats then? So you've got somebody that's uh could tell you your past successive kind of percentage, yeah. Yeah, Class. yeah there's a there's a full report that based on. Um and there's like there's loads there's like even it tells you how many times you passed a certain player and everything um but yeah it's pretty interesting i like to look at it after the after the games when, if we get it, if we get it sent through but um i'm i'm quite big on stats like even when i'm wearing my like gps and stuff i like to see like my top speed and everything like that so um the little report that we get is is pretty detailed which is which is good Jesus, Richie, could you imagine uh, us getting the stats after our match against Crumlin United the other week? <laughs> when we were playing a match, we got absolutely that. hammered. 6-1, and I, to be honest, it could have been about 10-1. And uh, so, oh, uh, goodness, it was what our pass completion rate was that, that day. But anyway, well, let's, let's move on swiftly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Vicky, just, just talking about that, uh, for any budding, uh, girls that are listening and will listen, and I run after Girls Academy myself, could you give us a kind of a breakdown of your, your training regime, sort of from 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 after match day right through to the next match day. You know, is there gym involved? Is it you know? Just give us a an overview to see what these girls will have ahead of them when it comes to kicking on. Um. Well, I would be in I would be in the gym nearly every single day, probably apart from a Saturday because I work um a long day on work. Um. But from a match day on a Wednesday, um. Normally I would be in the gym on a Thursday just doing some upper body. I would just like mess out the lower body. Um, then Friday, um, Friday nights we have training with Cliftonville, but I would probably be in the gym during the day as well for two sessions. Um, and then Sunday we have training for Cliftonville. Monday training for Cliftonville. I, most of the time I'll do double sessions, so I'll have gym during the day and then Cliftonville later on that night. Um, and then Tuesday is I'll just do upper body again just to keep my legs fresh and then Wednesday is match. Brilliant. And obviously nutrition, all that stuff's all dealt with. All these are these are a team of people behind us helping us along the way. <laughs> I wish. No, we um <laughs> I I just saw my own food. I wish we had see if I could get someone to cook for me, that would save me a lot of time a lot of time and a lot of effort. It sounds like you'd be in the gym all the time then. Just I leave the gym date. I know I would have even more time. That would be that would be top notch. I really would. I'm starting to feel guilty now because I said to Louise we're going to go for a Domino's tomorrow night, and now Vicky just said I'm gym this day, gym that day, and I don't go to gym any day, and I'm getting a Domino's tomorrow. I'm going to have to Louise cancel that Domino's, please. Here, don't worry. I had a Domino's last night. You can still eat, you can still eat nice food and go to the gym. You right. <laughs> but if you don't go to the gym though, that's that's my point. I, I don't go to the gym, so and I'm eating a Domino's. So uh, yeah, right, okay. you don't know how, how I live how I live. <laughs> <laughs> and what what's your Domino's you go for? Um do I, I don't really I don't really normally eat Domino's. Um we just got it last night because I come in 
um, after the match and we were still hungry even though we had had like dinner and everything. Um, but we just got a, a small pizza between us. It was like a meal for two, like a small pizza and then like some chicken and wedges. Pretty boring, I know. I know, I get a pitch for myself. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Have you time for socialising on a beer? Have I, yeah, I've got loads of time. Well, I try to, I try to skip out the beer, but we're, <laughs> I do do the socialising sometimes when I, when I'm not too tired after the gym and stuff. But she sells a beer when she's on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> That's my secret. <laughs> That's great, uh, Richie. So we'll uh, run along with uh, the old Richie well, McGee. Keep you up, eat. Well, yes, we can do that. And then, Vicky, I just want to get your insight or your thoughts on the on the the ladies' uh, efforts in, in the Euros. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry, forgot about that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you, do you want to maybe head with that now, and then we will rattle through the keep you up equations afterwards? I think Tats has a, a line on that. Yeah, whichever. I don't mind. Yeah, what, what, what about the Euros then? What, what, what did you make of the, the tournament itself? And did you kind of turn was, into a bit of a England supporter towards the end, like myself? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, it was good. You know what? I actually, as soon as I found out that um, I wasn't going to the Euros, I, I booked a holiday because I was like, there's no other chance that I'm going to get to go. Um, but we went to an Irish pub um, every time Northern Ireland was playing and we watched. Um, but it was just massive, wasn't it? It was just even not like even just the Northern Ireland games, but just in general. Um, yeah. Like everyone, like obviously I lived in, um, lived and played in Southampton for, what, four years. So to watch the girls playing at St Mary's was incredible. But um, obviously all my friends from England that I was just watching their stories and everywhere was buzzing, no matter where the games were, or who was playing everywhere like every city that they were playing it was just always buzzing so it yeah it was just massive and I did by the end of it want England to win which I hate saying but um it was just good for I think the whole of the UK instead of someone someone else winning it um for England to win it and it's just gonna it's just gonna make even girls over here see them winning it and want to play for Northern Ireland even more and maybe play against England and get different results to maybe what we have done. So it was it was just incredible to watch. Oh, fantastic. And it was a tough group as well, Northern Ireland winning, wasn't it? You know, it was it was it was a pretty tricky group, but you know, no matter what, they they've done the country proud in and they've kinda I suppose laid down the foundations for you know, future Northern Ireland stars like yourself, and obviously they've still got a, a lot of young um, ladies within their squad that you know that can take through the future tournaments. But uh, they've done fantastic, didn't they? But it was it's a tricky enough group. Yeah, it was pretty tough, and obviously playing against England so recently and um, Austria so recently, um, we knew how they were going to set like set up and everything. But it was obviously they're just that one one step ahead. Um, especially England, so the like in a way you're just going out and trying to keep the score nil nil for as long as you can and maybe get them on the counter. And um it obviously didn't happen but I mean for players coming through like even like little Kerry Beatty and um younger players like that they know that when they go and play them next, maybe it could be a different story. And they can maybe get a result from them. But We'll see. Only time will tell, won't it? That's it. That's it. And what about Kenny, Kenny Shields himself? You know, you, did you? You obviously had a bit of experience with him when you went and joined up with the with the squad at the beginning of the year. What what sort of a a manager is he like? Is he a really good coach? Good, you know, man manager or what? What type of a, a a guy is he? Because he's he's obviously been about and he's managed some some big big clubs. Yeah, do you know what? I had never, I had never had like any really real interaction with him until um, November when I went in and played like in-house friendlies with them before they 
um, went and played their double header in December, was it, or late November, I'm not sure. Um, and literally what you see is what you get. Like any of the interviews that he does or anything, and he, he like cracks little jokes and everything. Um, any time in the morning that we were having like our breakfast before training, like we'd always come down like to the, the table and just try and like crack jokes or like just have a chat and everything. And, um, he's so, he's so nice, you know, like anything, like he would, do, he would literally do anything for you. Even when I was in, even when I was injured, like he would come over and have a chat because like I was always just in the gym by myself. So he would know like to come and talk to me. So like, yeah, anything he can do, he'll do it. And obviously when he needs to be ruthless, he can be ruthless if the results aren't going or we're not like if we're not playing sharp enough or anything like he'll be straight to the point so if yeah whatever you see in the interviews is is pretty much pretty much what he's like yeah and obviously they, they didn't uh we didn't make it through sort of the through to the the world cup but nonetheless it was still a a pretty impressive uh, qualification um, campaign. I think it was the most points that Northern Ireland have ever picked up in a in a qualifying group. Um, so obviously moving in in the right direction. I suppose that's that's going to be your aim once you get things sort of up and running. You get a good run of games at Clifford. Hopefully, win the league, get into the Champions League. Um, just getting back into the into the squad again and getting back into the swing of things with with the rest of the girls. I hope so. Um, that's obviously like another aim just to be back in and around the squad. I know like I'm not uh, right now, I'm still not even 100% fit. So um, that's why I'm in the gym all the time. <laughs> but yeah, um, the main aim is to, to get back in and around the squad um, and hopefully just push for a starting position um, would be would be pretty good. Yeah, I think you've, you've got Obviously, fantastic determination. I think your inspiration to to young girls, boys, and everybody. Just how you've kind of come through this year, and you're only what twenty five. So you probably, if you're like James Miller, uh, of of Liverpool, that's who we support. That's why I had to get something Liverpool related in. Yeah, he's playing. <laughs> what's he now, Richie? Fifty. So you, you could you could have like a potentially another probably four or five international tournaments. You know, so you plant the in front of you. So. No, you've yeah. you've got the you've got the right attitude. Great stuff. I don't think I'll make it till I'm fifty though. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Were you gonna say something, there, Richie? Sorry. No, no, not at all. So you've squeezed the hell of a lot into a short uh, career so far, and you've as I say, plenty of years ahead of you. So best of luck with all that. Let's uh, maybe throw back uh, a few memories and give a few shouts out to your friends as we we'll play a keep you up. Play the keep you up questions. I'm sure your heads. Racked. I, I still is. I'm still trying to think. <laughs> uh, well, we'll rattle through them as best we can. See, see how we get on. So shout outs is great to be able. So from the top, so best team you've ever played for? Um, probably Lewis, just in terms of quality and level. Yeah. Brilliant. Facilities too, I'm assuming. Uh, best captain. My first captain at Lewis. Um, I don't. I don't think anybody could top her. Uh, Kelly Newton. She, the nicest, the nicest girl you would ever meet. And then she stopped, steps across the white line, and you would not want to mess with her. <laughs> We've encountered a few of them there tonight. <laughs> Mario Connor. There yeah, comes the main. <laughs> uh, best goal scorer. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say oh either Kirsty or Caitlin McGuinness for um Cliftonville. The amount of goals they score is ridiculous. I, I think I think Caitlin score I think it was Caitlin scored an unbelievable header the other week. Against Middlestar? Yeah, and it was. It was yeah. the ball was actually curling, you should see it. Did you see it, Richie? That was absolutely yeah, okay. pinpoint, but she was actually going away from goal and house. I don't even know why she generated the power to get it in, but anyway. So which one are you picking then? You know, or you go, you can't go both. You know, you just have to. Oh, I don't know. I don't, 
give maybe Caitlin a, a few more years. Or so. uh, that's a good answer there. <laughs> good answer, good answer. All right, best touch. Um, Tony Lee for Cliff and Ball again. She just plucks the ball out of there and like in between two players and you just wonder how she does it. Awesome. All right, so we'll go best keeper, best defender, best midfielder, and best striker. Best keeper, um, Faye Becker, um, from Lewis when I was there. She's unreal. Just so tall and just insane. Um, best defender, still to this day, Fawn Mulholland from Ballymena. She was so calm on the ball and she was centre back and no one could get past her. Literally nobody. Um best midfielder um gosh that's tough. I'm trying to think. Can I say myself? No I'm joking. Um no no I'm not gonna say me. Um I'm trying to think because we had in England we had we did have some very good centre mids. Um, CDM, I would probably say Leah Rutherford from Lewis again, and I also played before at Portsmouth. Um, defensively, and her the way she can pick out a pass and everything is, is she's probably one of the best at what she does. And then, did you say striker as well? Striker, yeah. Striker, probably. Kayla McGuinness or do you know what and Kerry Beatty I think Kerry Beatty is the most natural number nine that that is probably in and around Northern Ireland um just in and around the sexual art box crazy like our movement and everything off defenders is is unreal all right these are the toughies as well best left foot and best right foot best left foot I'm gonna say Sarah Campson she was at Portsmouth and Lewis again. Um, her left foot was an absolute rocket. Like people would run away from her shots. It was it was scary. Right foot is a toughie because there's so many. Um, I don't even know. There there's a few. Probably in terms of range of passing would be Tony Lee. Um, again, just her her range of passing and how she can see, like a short passes, long passes is pretty good. Yeah, and then my mind is blank to even try and think of anymore. Tony Lee gets a shirt. <laughs> she, she, right, <laughs> this is a big one for you, I'm sure. But best manager. My best manager. If I don't say Brandy, I'll kill me. But my best manager in terms of who I probably develop with the most is um, John, my manager from Lewis, who brought me to Lewis. Um, it, he just believed in me so much that it just gave me so much confidence. And then my second season at Lewis, I was on fire. Like, um, and, and I, ha- I have to say too, because I developed loads um, when I was training for Northern Ireland over here, um, Noah Mitchell, he also brought the best out of me as well because he believed in me and um, he believed in me playing centre mid when I was really young which is which is always tough but those two but probably John the most when I was at Lewis Alright player that loves a hard challenge player that loves a hard challenge myself I thrive for it <laughs> um, <laughs> no but um Gosh, I can't do you know what? I can't think because some people are very scared, aren't they? Um Yeah, that's it. They run away. <laughs> there must be you. We can give you we can give you the nod on that one. <laughs> I'll i I'll take that one. I love it. <laughs> Alright, so another two. Quickest player and best all rounder. Quickest player is Oh, I don't know who's faster of Lauren Wade and Cara Hamilton. But they're they're rapid. Both of them are very very quick. Um, Car is almost like a sprinter, and even her technique of how she runs. And what was the other one? Sorry. 
Yeah, or best all rounder. I would um, probably Marissa Callahan. Callahan. She, I don't know. She can just. I feel like she can just do everything, all of the time. <laughs> Makes it easy. Make it look easy anyway. Oh, definitely. All right, last two. Yeah. Keep the uppies, then you'll, you'll get your, your head short for a minute or two. So, player that got better with age. And the last one is player who always gave 100%. Player that got better with age. Hmm. I'm trying to think who I played with when I was younger and still would know now. Um... I would probably, do you know what? I would probably say Marissa as well. Like she's in her she's in her thirties now and she's performing at the highest level still, which is crazy. And what was the other one? The last one was the player that always gave a hundred percent. Player that always gave a hundred percent. Oh gosh, mind blank again. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, probably. D- do you want Sammy Quayle? I played with I played with her at Portsmouth and um, Lewis as well, and she was just a hundred percent all of the time. She didn't do anything by halves, like anything fitness wise or anything. She was finishing last in the yo yo and everything. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, so say I'll hand you back the thoughts here. We're going to spin the wheel of Berba. I think he's a hot topic question for you before we round things off. Thank you. Okay. So, Vicky, this is an imaginary wheel, so we just have to imagine that I'm just spinning a wheel here um, in the pokey uh, uh, box room here in the house. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to land on a really hot topic and you simply give your opinion on it. Simple as that. Richie, are we still doing the music effects? No. You're in charge of the, the app tonight, so I don't, oh, have, I'm a, a, I don't even have think I've sound effects. Actually, sure, we'll, we'll do without the sound effects, but I do love them deep down. So, Vicky, <laughs> I've just spun the wheel there and it's landed on on the back of a Glenavon player becoming the youngest ever senior player at just the tender age of 13 to play football in the UK. In your opinion, should there be an age gap? Is 13 too young? Or if you're young enough, you're good enough? Or is it if you're good enough, you're young enough? I don't know. But what's your opinion on that? <laughs> I think that was it. No, I definitely think if if you're good enough, you're old enough. Um, like I said, I was playing senior football from when I was 14. And then now the, the age restriction, even in our league, has gone up and you have to be 16. Um, right. But I think if, if you are, if you are good, if you're good enough and you can handle it and your manager knows that you can handle maybe a, a rougher challenge or anything, then you should be able to play. Like if you're an asset to the team, then why not? Like why, just because you're, you're a little bit younger than, most of the players on the pitch, I don't think it should make a difference. If you have the quality to play, then you should play. And it only it can it can it can only develop you because you're playing against better players who are a little bit older. So in some ways it would be a good thing. Obviously if you if you can handle it and maybe like in England, I know like obviously if you're you're playing Prem football and you're really young, sometimes it can go to your head, but if you can keep a level head, then why not? Why shouldn't you? Yeah, all all fair points. Yeah, um, Richie, what what's your take on it? Being a, it's, it's, I'm kind a, of a bit split. It's, you know, I suppose, it's, I suppose, it's, I, I, it's based I, I, on a, an individual thing. You know, that kid, to his credit, at thirteen, played against Downstown. Uh, individual, it, it's it's a. It's a difficult one to be honest with you. He must be big and strong. He must be physically capable of taking a, a challenge. You know, there's no uh, there's no shrinking ballast at that level. And as and as Vicky says, he must have been able to add something to the team for him to, to get to play. It's not a, it wasn't a, a showcase, it wasn't a showboat. You know, for the sake of doing it. And he got it he got an assist with his first touch. There you are. Not, well, there not you a bad way, yeah. 
as I say, it's a, it's a one-off case. It's a very special incident to be 13. You know, yes, 15, 16, where, you know, you're starting to develop. Makes sense, but as I say, it's a special case. It's a hard one to, hard one to call. So that's all, Stretchy. You're going to... I think we're really coming to the end, yeah. Vicky, thanks for your time. As I said, that wasn't too controversial of a question. It could have, could have, could have uh, went any other way. Okay. Well, listen, we've had a bit of crack. Delighted that you're you're back on track after your after your injury, uh, physically and psychologically. You're back fit and fit, strong. Ten points clear at the top of the league. Cliftonville have their name written on the on the league title. Let's hope um, you can Cliff- celebrate. Too. Yes, Glens are next, so that's a that's a big big top two game. But again, we're definitely ready for the challenge. But I'm buzzing. Yeah. Well, you've made two new football friends in me and Tots. We'll be watching out for you and cheering on Cliftonville. I haven't. We have intentions. Our girls' academy had arranged or are arranging to go down and watch one of the games uh, on a Wednesday night. We've been invited by a few teams, so as I say, it's nice to listen. Let the girls will be able to listen. Your tale and your story, and uh, you know, take take confidence from it that there's a pathway there if, if they really, really want it. Yes, definitely. So you've, squeezed, you've squeezed so much into such a short career, and you say you've not ten years ahead of you. So we can only wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Keep on keeping on, as I say. <laughs> yes, I will. I will. And we'll keep we'll keep your number as well because in ten years' time you'll be qualifying for over thirty five, Richie. So I was thinking, me and Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Center mid by that stage, probably I'll be just sitting in front of the back four and just let Vicky just uh, just create havoc. Will you not, will you not be over fifties then? Ah, oh, now come on, like cheaper. You're supposed to end in a nice way here, Vicky. You've just absolutely killed me here. Oh, thanks, thanks a million. No, I'm, I'm, da- I'm definitely getting the dominoes now. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> Being fifty, you're still over thirty-five. So that's not so bad. Oh, that's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. Listen, Vicky, we'll let you get back to the gym. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, chat, we'll chat to you again soon. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. All the best. Bye. Good luck. Bye. Keep your uppies with Richie and Tots. <laughs>